All right. Hello. Welcome. So nice to have you for another sketch session. Hope you had a great Thursday, right? It's Thursday. I think it's Thursday. Hope you had a great Thursday and I hope you have your pencils at the ready. Um, if you've never been here before, my name is Carolyn. I'm the owner of Curious Studios where I teach artists like you classical drawing skills so you can build a very solid foundation to explore your creative voice and style from. And um, along those lines, every Thursday we get together here so we can train or work out without the grunt and sweat, just a little bit of sweat, but in the best way. Um, we do these sketch sessions where we um, cycle through different subject matter. And with every single session, we also cycle through or actually always kind of come up with a new focus. So there's always a lesson that we're zeroing in on and then we practice it together. And just to prepare you, if you've never participated in these, the way that you will get the most out of the session is not just by observing and kicking back and just, you know, watching um, the kind of this passive consumption. You'll learn a little bit, but you'll mainly be entertained maybe, um, but you won't, you won't really benefit from it as much. The way I designed these sessions is so you can draw along with me. So I will um, present the lesson up front and you pay attention to that. And then when the reference material comes up, draw along. So if you haven't already, grab a pencil, grab a ballpoint pen, a marker, whatever you got, and, and implement because it's only by doing that we really ingrain lessons into our system rather than just by passively watching. So hopefully you are on your biggest screen that you have because the bigger your screen, the easier it is for you to see the reference and the easier it will be for you to draw along. So like this, you'll get the most out of tonight or whenever you're seeing this. Um, the subject of tonight is portraiture and we're zeroing in on the mouth. So we've done a couple of portrait lessons in the past. I highly recommend that you catch the one on structure because I'll be referencing this quite a bit. Don't worry, I will definitely try and catch you up as much as possible and explain what I am um, referencing, but I think it will be helpful. So that's one of the very first ones I ever did. Um, let me think, what else do I wanna say? I told you how to get the most out of this. I'm seeing Chris is in the house, Ted's in the house. Hello, so good to see you guys. And um, oh yeah, you know what? Before we dive in, one more thing that I'm super thrilled about, if you don't already know this, just recently I released a four day free mini course about how to get into figure drawing or how to get back into figure drawing. So if you maybe drew the figure way back when, but you never really had a good introduction and you never really quite knew what to do with it, um, you might wanna sign up for this free mini course. I put a link in the description below the video where you can sign up. It'll put you onto my email list and every day you'll get one of those videos delivered into your inbox and you will learn, first of all, why figure drawing is so great, what kind of artists will benefit from it, um, what kind of drawings you should be pursuing, how to avoid beginner mistakes, how to set yourself up, what tools to use, and then like once you're actually drawing, what should you, be, should you be looking out for in the beginning of your drawing? And you will get a great workbook with lots of supportive imagery. So if figure drawing is something you've always wanting to get back into or to start for the very first time, you'll definitely wanna grab that free mini course. So it's a four day or four video course. Anyways, so with that said, let's get into the lesson of tonight, shall we? And <laughs> dental dome night, I like that. That's right, dental dome night. Um, all right, so the, the, the way I thought about this lesson was like this. I titled it, How to Make the Mouth Look Right. Because usually when we draw, when we get to the mouth area, you might capture the likeness of the, the mouth of the model, but it often feels like it just doesn't belong to the rest of what you have already drawn, like the eyes and the nose. Like it just feels like it doesn't belong. And the reason for that problem is that we think of it as a standalone feature. When we think drawing the mouth, we usually default to lips. And we, rather than thinking of the mouth, mouth as a whole structure, we just think about the lips. 
And that's just one component of that. So tonight I want to show you how we don't just want to think about drawing lips, but what other elements we need to become aware of, what other elements we need to master, and most importantly, how to place it in context to the rest of the head. All right, so the first thing that we need to be aware of is that the mouth isn't just a flat entity. You know, like we have our flat pieces of paper, if we draw a line on it, that's a flat thing. But if you took this paper and then you curved it to make more of a cylindrical or like a kind of a bowed out shape, that's really more what it is that we're dealing with when we are looking at somebody's mouth. So the first point that I want you to think about tonight is what is the underlying structure of the mouth? And I'll give you a little hint. It's dome-like. Chris already gave it away. Hey, Frankie, good to see you. And then you want to think about, okay, this dome, what, what part are we talking about? We're, we're talking about this portion, so in between these two creases, right? There's like this kind of rounded area, it's dome-like. The way I like to think about it, like you have a ball of cookie dough or Play-Doh or whatever, and you're sawing off um, a little portion of it. And you take that portion and you plop it on top of what is the simple egg form of the head. So that's what we have to remember. Okay, second point of what we have to think about when we draw the mouth is that we want to place it right. So for that, you have to have some understanding of um, proportions. We talked about proportions before that they're kind of a tricky animal because they only are useful to reference when the model is looking straight at you, like with a level head. As soon as the model is tilting or tucking their chin, um, Referencing proportions isn't as useful. However, we still need to be aware of them. So what you want to think about is when the when you have the hairline and the chin, that's a good um, starting point. Because if you cut this in half, you get to the tear duct. In most people, there are always exceptions, but like this is where we're starting. Between hairline and chin, cut this in half, that's where the tear duct is. Then you cut this in half again, you get to the bottom of the nose. Now, if you cut from the bottom of the nose to the chin in half yet again, you should go to the bottom of the lower lip, not the separation or the partition line in between the lips. There's another proportional, um, um, I don't know what to, what to call it, like a propor proportional increment that you can think about that goes from the bottom of the nose to the chin, like if you take that segment and you divide that segment into thirds, on the first third, you fall on that partition. And here's the good one. The second third falls right here where we have this chin dome. Okay, so point one, be aware of the underlying form, the big underlying form. Point two, place the mouth well by thinking about the proportions. Point three, know your parts. And this is what I was getting at right in the beginning. Let me dive down here because I have something supportive um, to um, show you. So these are these plaster casts of features. I hope it's not too blown out for you, but I think you can tell. Um, what I said earlier, the obvious parts are the lips, right? Everybody knows, oh yeah, they're lips. But however, there are a couple of parts we need to be aware of when we draw the mouth. And those are the mouth corners. I'll talk about them more later. These pillars, let me see how, to, yeah, like this. Um, these pillars that are left and right below the lower lip, and then this crease that leads to the chin dome. So those are a couple of structures that we usually kind of just forget about, but those are the ones that are gonna anchor your free floating lips into the rest of the face. So again, mouth corners, and then these column-like structures left and right to the lower lip, and then that crease that leads to the chin, chin dome. So those are those parts that we need to be familiar with. Next, and I'll talk about this a little bit more with some images, we need to become aware of how perspective affects how we draw the mouth. And I'll talk all about this as we're drawing. And then the last thing will be about aligning the mouth right. And so here's, sorry, I just have to set this down. Here's a little guideline. If you see the model straight on, 
you want to think about the corners of the mouth. If you traced up a line like this, that kind of vertical line would align with the pupils of the model. Not always, but in most cases. So it's just a good way to check your, your mouth from being too wide for the rest of the features. You also will have to align it um, in terms of like, did you slant the mouth? So again, all of this we'll get into when we have the reference going and I can show you in the drawings. Before, um, hello, Centergeist. Um, that's what I'm gonna call you because that's, <laughs> that's what your handle is. Good that you're here. Okay, let me switch cameras over and I'll show you um, some prepared drawings to tell you even more about what I just was going through. So I need this one here. Okay. So let me get my pencil. Um, if we think about the head in its most simplified way, you can think about it as a ball and that ball has like a mask on it and that mask is curved, right? So that's what's underneath everything. And <laughs> I guess I can read. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I'm responding to Center Geist, his, his comment in the chat, or, or there, so I don't know if it's his or her, um, their comment. All right, so this is underlying everything, right? If you sliced through this line, you'd get kind of this oval surface, right? This oval cut of the surface. And what we're gonna be interested in, like if the model is tilting their, their, their head down, do we see the curve like this or is the curve actually going to go the other way where we don't see the cut anymore and it's just kind of going away from us. On top of this, on top of these simple forms here, let me scoot this up and over so you see what I've prepared over here, we get this kind of segment of a sphere. That's what I was talking about with like, imagine a ball of Play-Doh, you, you kind of saw a piece off, you take this piece, it's like this half dome, and you plop that piece on top of here. So it would be sitting somewhere here. And then what anchor into the face like this. What you wanna think about is that this is curved. It's curved this way and it's curved that way. If you arc this line up, it means we're seeing the model from underneath or they're tilting their head up. If we see it from this way, like if this curve is tilting down this way, we're seeing the model tucking their chin or we're standing above them. So this arc, it's gonna be really important in indicating the perspe perspective. The other thing that we wanna think about and how the mouth um, kind of responds to perspective or how it looks in perspective is that if the person is facing this way, so this is the direction of their nose, whatever area is closest to you, that mouth segment going to be longer than the mouth segment on the far side. So you see how this here is shorter, this here is longer. And this is nothing big, this is pretty subtle. It's just, you know, by the model having a three quarter point of view, you can't pretend like you're seeing the mouth straight on. So again, whatever is further away becomes smaller, whatever is closer is bigger. So this, is the, this was my whole spiel on um, perspective. We were looking up, we curve the mouth line this way. So here would be the middle of the lip. Here would be the mouth corners, mouth corners. And then you fill in the rest, right? If, you, if you're looking down at the model or the, the model is tucking their chin, we begin with an arc this way and then we find the mouth corners. This one is probably gonna be hidden from sight over there because it kind of goes back and around, but you get the idea. Okay, so this is what I wanted to talk about perspective-wise. Last thing I'm going to mention 
are the segments and a little bit of a, um, in German, we call them donkey bridges. Like a donkey bridge is like something that helps you remember something. So I, I'm giving you a little remember um, helper on, on making sure that all the mouth parts are included. And I, um, and I got it from Glenville Poop. So when you're replacing the mouth, you want to begin with a partition in between the lips. And you can think of it as an M. And this M, so here's your M, that M is sitting on this wire. So here you really have these little tabs that you can hold on to. And this is the end point of your wire, which is where your mouth corners are. This M can be really steep and short, or it can be really long and flat. You can have long tabs here, or you can have tabs that kind of are flush with the mouth corners, like in this example. You see, so this M is super flat, and we can't really tell where these tabs are, right? So as I said, this M has millions of variations, but it's useful to think of it as an M. And, and Often it doesn't even look like an M, but it's useful to seek out an M-like quality. Once you have that M, that separation between upper and lower lip, you want to think about the lip pillows. So for the upper lip, you can think of three pillows. So we have the tubercle, which is the center pillow. And then we have longer side pillows. And for the bottom lip, we only have two pillows. And again, just how that M is variable like crazy, these pillows are variable like crazy as well. So you can have pillows that go all the way to the corner of the mouth, or you can have pillows that are like really short and only go here. And like, it gives you this kind of Cupid's um, look. Um, your tubercle, that centerpiece, most of the times you have this kind of downward curve, but not always. There are people where it's more like um, puffy and bulging up. So be prepared for a ton of variation, which results in all the beauty that's around us. And then for the lower lips, um, the same is true. You can have really short bottom lip pillows, or you can have really long ones. They can end at the little tabs that hold up your M, or they can go past the tabs that hold up your M. So you can already see how much variation is happening. Um, so very, very versatile. Now, I addressed the lips. I got at the mouth corners. Let's talk about the mouth corners a little bit more in depth. The way you want to think about them is like these little bean shapes. And um, let me see if I have some place if you think about a donut, my husband actually bought donuts today. That was really fun. <laughs> I haven't had donuts in a long time, so it was great. But you know how the donut, it curls in towards the center? That's what our um, mouth corners are like. So this little kind of teardrop shape right here and here, think of it as a little portion of the donut kind of tucking in. Lastly, I already mentioned it in, in the intro, we want to become aware of these columns below the lips. And I highly recommend that when you draw your lower lip, by the way, that you don't make this thick outline just gonna look like the person is wearing like a fat liner, like a lip liner. It's just gonna look weird. Um, and the reason why it's gonna look weird is because this transition here from the lip to um, kind of the outside of the face, this is a very subtle plane change. So I wouldn't make a big outline here, okay? But you wanna become aware of the shape of these columns, how far are they apart? It kind of creates this um, plane in between that's kind of tucked in. And then you wanna seek out the chin dome. So again, don't just focus in on the lips. We're not lip hunting. We're drawing the whole mouth. It's not called the lip drawing class. It's called the mouth drawing class. And um, 
For that, we need to have mouth corners. We need to have these pillars. I'm sure there is some fancy name for it. I don't know it. Maybe I'll look it up one day. And we need the chin dome. And then when you are up here, we want to have this little separation, um, kind of that gap that goes down towards the tubercle of the lip. Okay, that was a lot of preparatory work, but I think that was necessary. So now I'm going to hit play on our model footage. And... We'll get going. So all of these up front, oh, this is something I wanted to mention earlier. I'll say it now. All these up front drawings are gonna be five minute poses, if you wanna call them that. And the reason for that is not so you get stressed out, but the reason for that is because it'll force us to make quick decisions. And when we get in the habit of making quick decisions, we have to trust what we're doing. And sometimes we'll get it right. A lot of the times we'll get it wrong. Um, but the more we practice these quick decisions, the better they'll get in the long run. And so I designed these, these sketch sessions so we have this opportunity in a safe place where nobody's gonna judge you because I can't see what you're doing. You can't see what each other are doing um, to get better. And so you'll see me do a bunch of shitty drawings. Some of them will be mediocre and some of them will be um, all right, maybe some even good. But again, the point is if you have to make quick decisions, uh, that's a really great way of getting better. Okay. I am beginning just with a very gentle, light underdrawing. For these five minute ones, I'm not gonna draw the whole head. For the five minute ones, I'm just focusing on the mouth area, seeing all the variations in perspective and mouth, mouth shapes. And then for the last two, we'll have a 10 minute and a 20 minute drawing. And for that, um, I'll do the entire head. So just a preparatory comment. Okay, so now I'm thinking about placing it. So I have this kind of bottom of the nose, bottom of the chin. Um, if I find the halfway point there, that should be the bottom of the lower lip, remember. Let's bring this down a little bit more. And then I'm beginning with my separation line. And, and I'm, I'm already alluding to the fact that this is a dome, right? By the way, I curve this line. Um, I'm paying attention. So if here's a mouth corner and here's a mouth corner, and I connected these two mouth corners with my pencil, I'm checking literally on the model, is that connection angled or is it level or is it angled the other way? So that's something you wanna check beforehand. Hey, Sorab, good to see you in the chat. Um, once I have that, then I begin at the center. Always begin at the center. And so on this model, the tubercle isn't as puckered. It's a very wide tubercle, but I'm still going to put it in. And then I'm going to observe how my M elements wrap around this perspective. And here, parts of this M kind of gets overlapped because we kind of were looking down, right? So it's getting overlapped by the outside of the upper lip. But I'm gonna follow through and then see, okay, here is the corner and I hit a stopping point, right? Put an end to it. Just how when we draw gestures and figure drawing, we always wanna put the feet down to, to end that visual flow. Gotta put the mouth corners in. So now I have my M, which doesn't look much like an M anymore, but you know, I, it's, it's a jumping off point. Now I'm building my pillows, tubercle. I'm noticing, okay, these pillows go all the way to the corner of the mouth at least on the left side. 
here, it tucks under lower lips. So she has pretty full lower lips. One pillow and another pillow. And now I'm going to look at the outer edge of the lips. How does it dip down here at the tubercle? And so with five minutes, I'm not going to get into much shading, if any. So I don't have to worry about the outlining element as much. This goes back here. I'm finding my edges for the lower lip. Oh man, that went really fast. I don't have to talk. Time goes by much quicker. Let me see if I have more space over here for a second one. Okay. So let's begin with just like a big foundation. Oops, I need to scoot that up. Big foundation thinking about that dental dome or dental mound people call it that too chin dome and nose is somewhere in here So this is my placement. Got to place the mouth right. So I'm going to take now from where that septum of the nose grows into the face to the chin. If I kind of cut that in half, it's probably somewhere here. That's where the bottom of the lower lip should be, about-ish. And so I'm going to put that partition slightly above. You know what? Let me go simple first. So first I'm going to begin with this. Okay, this stretches down this way. And then here's where the corner of the mouth would be. Now that I have that, I'm going to chisel out that M, which again, it's going to be subtle on her. I'm, I'm, I'm playing this up more so than you'll see it. So if you're sitting there, it's like, gosh, Carolyn, I have no idea what you're talking about with the M. I don't see an M. It's like it's, um, how to say this, like we're trying to tease it out. It's just a way to help you get the right angles for some of these edges. And then here, this disappears over to the other side. So if you think about that, this dome, rather than it being cookie dough, which would be yummy, but you know, let's, let's pretend it's made out of glass. You could see this edge of the mouth kind of wrapping around to the back and then the mouth corner would be here. So you always want to think three dimensionally. So again, we're not just copying. We are always analyzing. So here you can notice how perspective affects even the tubercle. You see how that left part is slightly longer than the right part. And then this goes down this way. It flows into the corner of the mouth. I'm looking, okay, how far do the lip pillows on the lower lip go here? Okay, and you see how there's this highlight? 
So that's what I meant by this is like a subtle plane change. So her, um, the picture of her makes it easy to see because she has lipstick on. So we have this kind of purple color and then the, the, the color of the skin. But here it's going to be the perfect opportunity to get those columns established. And those columns they may not stay in the finished part of the drawing. They're just a way for me to understand where I'm gonna begin and end my shading for any of the midtones I might um, establish later on for any shadows. So you always wanna think planar. And if you're thinking, well, what the heck's planar? Planar just means like looking at things in terms of facets. Okay. So how's that for a challenge? So we begin with our foundation here. Find the center line. So this is something I haven't talked much about, but it's actually crucial you, because once you at least become in your head aware of where the center line is, you're um, setting yourself up to notice which side do I see more of? Do I see more of the left side or more of the right side? So in this case, I feel like you're seeing a little bit more on the left, not quite as much on the right. Um, looking for ears is a really good um, way to figure out which side you're seeing more of. Wherever the ear shape is bigger, that's the side you see more of. And why do I need to know this? Because when we actually draw the lip sides, this one will be bigger, this one will be smaller, or at least should be. Here I'm finding the dental mound. Seeing the chin. So again, for those five minute ones, I'm only focusing on the mouth. I'm not drawing the... However, I still begin with the underlying structure of it. So see, I already indicated we're looking up. I curved this line. Hold on, what happened? Let me just see the picture went away. Okay, I guess I'm back. Well, that's weird. Can you let me know in the chat if, if this is laggy or what's happening there? I'm noticing I'm getting some notifications. Um, I don't know what's happening. Well, it seems like I'm still going, so I'm just gonna keep going. Okay. Yeah, I keep getting this message saying that there's not enough data, which is so strange I didn't change anything. Okay. All right. Well, if it's good for you guys, I'm going to keep going, hopefully. Just let me know in the chat if for some reason everything drops and um, I'm not noticing it. Sorry about that. So weird. Okay, so I'm placing my tubercle, finding the wings. Noticing how they kind of tuck under and being very specific about where the corner of the mouth ends this mouth. 
And so here we have the lower lip pillows kind of overlapping where we can't see the, the kind of pointy quality of the tubercle. So this one, I wanted to make sure we have kind of a profile. There's almost a complete profile here. So let's find the nose. Finding the, the dome. So these, these creases here, nasal labial creases, so whatever they're called. And then the chin dome. So you see, I didn't even um, begin with the lips yet. I'm just building the underlying structure. So here, so in, in, in some of the future examples, you'll, you'll see that, um, we have some smiles that we'll have to deal with. This is, this is being cut in half. Let's see, where's the halfway point? Kind of right around here. So that halfway point is only so useful, especially with an open mouth, because you know everything changes, the distances change. But you can still use it as a jumping off point. So I paid close attention to what angles are happening here, how long, and then just how earlier, um, now this part um, is disappearing on the other side, right? Because we can't look behind to the other side. And notice how now this mouth corner is becoming part of the shape of the mouth. So it's kind of, it's opened up here now. So we have like a very small segment of that left pillow and then the right pillow is all here. And here you can really tell how subtle of a plane change that is. See where the teeth are, kind of indicate that. Now with teeth, I recommend that you kind of leave them alone it, it all depends on how much time you're spending on your drawing. Like if you have multiple hours, then you'll have to deal with the teeth. Um, if you only have five minutes, 10 minutes, um, indicate them as a shape and hopefully indicate the perspective, like as in that they're um, dome-like, that they're arranged in a circular way. And so now I have the tooth edge here and I'm gonna include that, that far cheek that you see through here. So this little segment, that's the cheek peeking through the open mouth and that's important, otherwise it's gonna look weird. And then lastly, if I have time, I'll look for those planes underneath. Because again, the, those are gonna anchor the whole mouth structure. Because you can already tell, like the, these here are kind of more mid tony and then the chin that's facing up is catching some of that light. And if you're wondering who this guy is with a fabulous hat, this is from a festival in um, the nearby city where I grew up in Germany. They do this medieval festival where everybody dresses up and reenacts this medieval wedding celebration which was like one of the biggest wedding celebrations at the time and they have like this parade that goes through town 
and it's there's nothing quite like it it's all authentic costumes and you have to be born in the city to participate it's quite the shindig so now i'm gonna look for okay never mind here i was gonna put that little corner of the mouth in okay so our first challenge with a big grin So first, let's get the angle right. I'm trying to draw bigger. So I'm thinking, okay, this is an egg. If I snapped a rubber band around this egg where the eyes are, and then parallel to that would be where the mouth is. So I'm just kind of guesstimating this right now because again, I'm just focusing on the mouth. Just got five minutes. Thinking about the dental mound, where does that end? And then the chin dome. There we go. And then the center line. Where's the center line? So it's pretty close to the left. So you, now we can really tell, right, how, how little we see of the left side, how much we get to see of the right side, how perspective is affecting this. And you know, we have a nose that's in the way and that happens, <laughs> you know, sometimes we just, things get blocked. So right now I'm gonna pretend like this nose isn't there. I'm gonna do my best to draw as if I could see through, like me, as if anything is made out of glass. So let's begin with that separating line. And that, in this case, the separating line isn't touching, right? So here we have the tubercle. And this goes this way, up, and mouth corner ends right around here. I'm gonna draw the corner of the mouth in right away, this little bean shape. So think of a jelly bean. Um, and this little overlap here is important that happens on the jelly bean. here now I'm considering how what's the shape like of the open part of the mouth like if I had to cut this out of paper um, and I held the, this piece of paper up what would it look like and under here we have the tooth edge so don't think individual teeth Think um, just the, the rim of the teeth and, and see if you can sense their roundness. And then we have this lip pillow getting stretched over and this is getting stretched thin over here. Let me do a little bit of cleanup and with these five minute ones there's not going to be a pretty drawing happening, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing without the underlying tangle. Okay, and so now I'm thinking, okay, behind, if the nose wasn't there, how would this wrap around? So it would be somewhere here. I'm trying to visualize the top edge of the lip. And so this is pretty thin, stretched up pretty thin. And then these two lines are always useful, even if you don't see them, to gauge how, how much space there is until the nose grows out. And then, of course, you know, we would draw the nose back over to overlap. Um, let's get this fold in. So just how it's just how it's important to have these um, outer walls of the lower lip. It's important to have the outer wall of the upper lip as well. Okay. 
And if questions come up while you're drawing, um, you're wondering how something works and I didn't mention it or I mentioned it in a way where it didn't make sense to you, um, put it in the chat. I'll, I'll answer questions towards the end. Okay. All right. I think this might be one of the last five minute poses here. Oops. I'm actually going to draw most of the head here because we're kind of zoomed out on this one. And so notice. Um, I drew it as if it was upright. It's of course not the case. So we need to tilt that thing, that thing being that head. <laughs> Here's my center line. So again, the question myself is do I see more of one side than of the other, um, right? In this picture, I feel like it's fairly even. So I'm gonna put it just right in the center, my center line. But we're definitely looking up at him. So let's make this the eye line. Mouth. Chin. So here I'm not concerning myself too much with um, correct proportions. I'm just kind of making sure the um, placement in terms of if we're looking up at it or down of it is accurate and okay let's just place it here corner corner let's make this our dental mound so the dental mound that that kind of cookie dough half dome that's sitting partially underneath the nose so you see how i'm arcing this up so the nose kind of overlaps that just in case you've been wondering how far up that goes. Okay, so now beginning with the center, finding that tubercle, seeing how that M, which doesn't look much like an M at all, is stretching around that barrel-like form. And how that then swoops up into the mouth corner. Let's do the pillows to find the thickness of the lips. Um, so another way to think about these three pillows on top is like a little bird. So here's the bird body and then here are the wings of the bird and um, these wings can be really long and thin, as I said earlier, or they can be um, very short. So I thought that's a, a helpful visual. Okay, and then let's find again that shape in between the upper lip and the lower lip. Don't think about the teeth at this point. You want to ignore them and kind of squint at it. Um, again, imagine if you had to cut this out of construction paper and hold up that shape by itself. What would that look like? And then these two oval pillows for the lower lip. And let's get into the mouth corners. Again, like these little bean-like shapes. And let's find the columns under here. They're kind of slanting left and right. So no, these kind of drawings, they don't look pretty. As I said earlier, like these are workout drawings, right? They're, they're nothing that we will put into frames and, and show our friends to convince them that we're artists. 
um, they're our own practice. And practice isn't always pretty. Like all, all real artists know that you need to fail a lot in order to figure out what works. And if I can be the one showing you what failure looks like, then, you know, I'm totally willing to do that. I'm doing a little bit of shading in here. I didn't have much time to do it. Okay, let's move this over. So here we have 10 minutes now. So now I'm going to um, see if I can include more. Because I'm, I'm, I want to focus now on on putting the head in, or excuse me, putting the the mouth in context to the head. So the first thing is getting the placement of our head egg accurate. Is this egg upright or is there a tilt to it? And that's the trickiest part. It's so underestimated. But it's so crucial and it's so tricky. So I'm thinking if there is a axis driving through this egg, is this axis coming at me, going away from me, going left, going right? And what? how does it affect the shape of the egg? So our axis kind of goes like this, but the shape appears upright, which is strange, right? But that's just how it is here. So now I'm going to place my center line very considerately, thinking about how much of the right do I see, how much of the left do I see. Take this out. We're definitely looking down on him or his head is tilting one or the other. It's going to be the brow line. Maybe just the nose. I'm going to try and fit the mouth in here. Trying to find a good placement for the stental dome. And then here's the chin. I'm leaving the nose off for now. I'm going to begin with the mouth, and then if I have time for the rest, I'll draw the rest. I took this picture because I loved how red his ear looked. Unfortunately, we're not working with color today, <laughs> but isn't that cool? So I made the dental mound this wide, um, find the center line, and then beginning at the tubercle. And I'm just guesstimating how high. So whenever you're unsure if the placement is correct, just begin light. Uh, and if you don't know what light means, um, think erasable. Make your mark in a way where it's easy to still erase. Okay, so this is important. So notice mouth corner to mouth corner. If I connect these two with an angle, this must be perpendicular, not, excuse me, not perpendicular, parallel. It must be parallel to the nose attachment, the eye line, and the brow line. The reason why Mouths often look like they don't belong to the rest is because we will slant this angle down or make it level when the rest is tilted. They have to match up. So you can literally hold your pencil on the portrait, find the mouth corner, find this mouth corner, find the angle that's being created between the two. And in mine, I can probably bring this up higher.
And then looking at the gap in between the lips. Ignoring the teeth for now. Seeking out some pillows to find how thick these lips are. They're pretty thin. Mouth corner would be here, mouth corner being here, finding that crease. Between the columns, the little facet in between the columns and the chin down. I'm now overlapping the nose. I'm starting to work on some of the other features. So right here I'm building the nose box. Let me take out some of the underlying lines so it doesn't look so confusing visually. So in terms of um, my philosophy about erasing and making adjustments and um, er yeah, just like kind of taking things out as you go, I'm not a big fan of erasing, um, just kind of to make your drawing pristine. Um, but if your underlying line work is becoming an issue because it doesn't allow you to see clearly anymore then definitely take the time to erase things out if you're erasing because you're feeling um like not so proud of <laughs> the outcome like just leave it in just be honest with yourself where you're currently at and use your time by by actually making marks and corrections rather than just you know trying to hide that you made a mistake So you know how earlier I was telling you that you want to align the pupil with the corner of the mouth. Um, so you know, use your center line for that. And when somebody smiles, especially with a big grin, those mouth corners get pulled out that way. So they're going to get pulled out wider than the pupil alignment that told you. So in a straight face, um, that pupil alignment uh, will hold up. But on a big grin like this, that pupil alignment um, won't quite work because you'll get beyond the pupil most likely.
Okay, last one of the evening. For this one, we have 20 minutes. Let's see how it goes. So this one, we have a closed mouth again, a little bit easier to deal with. That'll go pretty big. Now let me see if I can make this, let me finish just a second here. I want to stretch this out a little bit bigger just so we can see it even better. I think sometimes if we have the reference big enough, we can really see it nicely. There we go. So let's begin by placing our egg, our head egg, mindfully, asking ourselves, is this egg tilting back? Is it upright? I'm going to go with this. So there's definitely a slight up tilt, right? And I'm thinking about center line. It's right there. Oh, I can probably nudge that over a little bit more into the middle. Here, you see that super bright plane on the right hand side. So that is the temporal ridge. So this is where the side of the head is morphing into the front of the head. So I'm putting that line in because it's a great um, landmark to orient on. And then if you find like in the middle of this side plane, see how the side plane would kind of like this oval. If I find the middle of that, and I'm thinking about how would, like if I had a rubber band stretched around here, how would that curve? So again, visual thinking, I'm gonna curve it this way. And see how my hand is drawing the whole imagined ellipse, not just the part that I'm seeing. So this is my brow line. Parallel with the brow line, I'm making the nose insertion line. This should be equal to where the chin will end. And then this should be where the elusive hairline is, right? So on him, it's thinning, but you know, you can see where it starts. One, two, should be about equal because his head tilting up isn't so strong that effective would, that um, perspective would affect it drastically. Okay, so now thinking about the eye socket here. So what I'm doing here right now is kind of this underlying structure of the head, which I mentioned earlier, uh, I went over in a previous sketch session, it's kind of the fundamental framework, framework of the head. So here this rhythm that I'm drawing goes from the top of the ear to the corner of the chin. That's where the front of the face becomes the side of the face. Um, again, those, those rhythms are useful for shading later on. And I'm thinking the nose insertion, how wide is his nose? And if you think about the nose as a box, like a wedge-like box, how does that connect with the eye socket? I'm going to erase my center line out here just so it doesn't visually confuse what's going on. 
Let's make this wedge wider down here. And we have the ball of the nose here, which by the way, the ball of the nose is more of a teardrop of the nose. And then we have the wing of the nose. See a little bit of the other side of the wing with the nose poking through. And the eyeballs. So notice how faintly I'm drawing the eyeballs, but I am considering the entire eyeball, like not just the open part of the eye, because I'll stretch the lids over it later on. Um, but I think now I have enough of a foundation that I can come down into the mouth area. So let's build our dental mound. So I'm looking for wing of the nose, that crease there. Building that dome. Finding where the chin dome is. And so again, if we go from the nose to the chin and we divide that area, we can cut it in half on a closed mouth and it should give you the bottom of the lower lip. Or if you cut it into thirds, first third gives you the in-between of the lips. Second third gives you that chin crease. Let's see how that plays out. And then we think about how those lips stretch. What's the angle first of all? So we have this kind of an angle, mouth corner to mouth corner. So I'm talking about the separation between the lips. So let's go from here to here. can't pick up much on the curvature on this one here. At least I'm not observing it at this stage. So then tubercle. Separation to the corner. So here the top pillow is kind of overlapping the mouth corner, but I'm still going to draw that mouth corner in. Again, this kind of teardrop shape there. I'm going to draw this even bigger. There. Let's build the width of the lips. So pretty thin-lipped person. And I'm looking at the planes or facets happening in between the chin crease. And then here's the far side of the cheek over there. Okay. I'm going to pull this crease out more. It's like these muscles are kind of pulling this way. Now let me do the same thing on the left. Now 
I'm taking some of this underlying stuff out so it doesn't confuse me too much. All right. I'm going to build those plane changes here at the center. Filtrum. I'm going to bring this one down more. So over here, I didn't leave enough room. I'm going to take this out one more time and see if I can have another go at it on this side. In terms of plane, so we have the lip going and tucking into the mouth corner here. And then we have this distance on the outer wall before we have more of the curved cheek part. Let's bring this down like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of shading. And before I do that though, I'm just gonna double check that my alignment here is parallel with these alignments that I have established. That this is bigger than this and that things um, match up and align in that regard. Now I can use that shadow pattern to help me establish some more of that structure. Until the time runs out. And so, you know, this middle phase, so this this phase where you kind of work on the structure and you try and find all your parts, you make sure that your perspective is on point. Like that is the ugliest part of the drawing. And this is usually the part when we freak out and we're like, ah, oh, it looks like shit. And you don't just want to like throw your pencil and run and hide and, you know, not show anybody this drawing. And um, I guess my recommendation is to learn to bear the middle phase because the middle phase is a crap phase of the drawing when things look like just you know not that great and if we run at that point though we don't see it through to the other end and on the other end of the middle phase is the finishing phase and that's where sometimes if we're lucky most of the times if we practice It'll come back together. And most people, most artists who have a speck of self-respect, they won't show you their middle phases because, you know, they're shitty. The middle phases is when we're not finished, when we're not resolved. There's nothing to write home about. And yet we need to get through it. And it's normal to have this middle phase. Like it doesn't like when your middle phase looks like crap, it doesn't mean that you don't have any talent and that you shouldn't be an artist. 
it just means that you're doing the work you're you're in the middle of a drawing and there's always that middle phase so i'm, I'm bringing this up because march is a little bit of a theme or my theme in march is a little bit um about this kind of messy middle Maybe later on, you can tell me in the chat how how what's your relationship with a messy metal. I can't really see the chat right now because earlier when it was lagging, I had to change windows and now my window with the chat is overlapped, but I'll get it back later. So if you're putting something in the chat, I'll, I'll look through it before we jump off. So when we draw lines, you see how I just kind of drew that line to accent the separation between the lips? You want to make sure you don't leave it as a line. You want to integrate that line as um, part of the darker shadow shape. And the reason for that is because lines, they trigger in our brain the thought of, oh, flatness. This is not real. This is paper or it's thin like um, a sheet of paper so if you if you want to avoid that being triggered you want to get rid of any lines in your drawing dealing with some of the mid-tones here so this whole outer wall of the mouth is a little bit of mid-tone and then the chin is catching light because that plane is um, angling up again more okay. Let's see if I can get to some of the rest of the portrait Before I do that though, let me anchor the left side a little bit more. Let's see if I can get some of those eyes figured out. I'm looking at the tear duct is right here. I'm going to go up, over, down. So when you draw eyes, especially on the far side of the head, always account for that little segment in between the edge of the eye and the edge of the head. So that is basically the thickness of the, the, the eye socket. So um, it's kind of like a rookie mistake to bring your eye shape all the way to the outer edge. Oh, 
<laughs> barely got, got part of the eye and but you know luckily the focus was on the mouth and I felt like that got resolved good enough for a 20 minute drawing so let me hop on over hold on one second I just want to make sure this is on top and let me transition here okay cool so well I hope that these last 60 minutes or so that we've been drawing that you know you've you were able to integrate that process of how to place the mouth onto a solid structure that you were able to ingrain that into your own artistic dna um before we jump off let me run through the five points that i want you to have in mind as you draw mouths one more time point number one always think about the underlying form the head is an egg and you want to think about if there's a rubber band snapped around where the mouth sits on that egg. Are we looking down on that rubber band like it creates a U-shape like this? Or are we looking up at it and it creates a U-shape like so? So here, this is the visualizer for it. Is it arcing down or arcing up? And um, on top of that simplified egg, we have yet another rounded mass which is kind of like this this half dome like again think about a cookie dough you slice a corner off you take that and you plop it on the front of the egg so that's the underlying form and it's going to affect how we stretch the lips over that form second point is place your mouth well so remember your proportions you can divide from it from the hairline to the chin in half get the eye line this divided from the eye line to the chin in half, you get the bo bottom of the nose. Divide this in half again, gives you the bottom of the lower lip, or you can um, divide this lower segment into thirds. First third ends on the partition, second third um, ends on that crease of the chin dome. Third, become aware not only of the elements of the lips, like the tubercle, the wings, um, and kind of the, the poofy pillows on the bottom lip, but also find the corners of the mouth, kind of like this, this jelly bean-like shape that kind of is almost like a teardrop. It's kind of like curving in like a donut hole. Um, find the two columns on the outer wall of the mouth and um, seek out these creases in between the nose and the mouth corners. And, and through placing those parts, you'll actually anchor your lips and make them feel like they're part of the head. Next point is to align your um, lips well, meaning on a kind of deadpan look, the mouth corners will align up vertically with the pupils and make sure that if you connect them mouth corner to mouth corner, that this is parallel with your nose line and your eye line and your brow line and your hair line. And if there's a tilt to them, then everything else needs to tilt as well. Um, and lastly, understand how perspective affects um, the mouth situation. Whatever's closer to you will be a longer segment, a longer lip segment, whatever's further away, like on a three quarter point of view will become foreshortened. Okay, well, I hope this was useful. Let me see, I see something in the chat. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Christopher, I hope you had a fun time just watching for a little bit. And <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I understand. Oh, I see. The 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 portrait looks like Conrad Adenauer. Uh, maybe. Yeah, um, I can I can see that a little bit. You're right. Um, OK, well, unless there are questions, well, Bill, you're, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad you got something out of this. What I always am interested in is how did you guys do tonight? Um, what were your struggles? What were your successes? Any aha moments? I want to hear about that. Um, you can put it in the chat here. You can put it as a comment or you can take it over to Instagram and tag me at Cura Studios. The best thing is for me when you post a picture of your work and I get it. You don't always want to share it with the rest of the world, especially if they're shitty drawings, right? Um, but you can send me a DM. Um, just send it on Instagram at Cura Studios or put it as a, a story post and tag me there and I'll give you that virtual high five and cheer you on for drawing and um, paying your dues to become better at your craft. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Next week we're going to go into animal drawing. Let me know if you have a particular animal that you'd love to practice together. And um, as I said earlier, if you didn't grab that 
um, four day mini course on getting into figure drawing the right way, be sure to grab that. It's below in the description of the video. Uh, and uh, I think you'll get a lot of value from that. Um, <laughs> you made your faces look like angry babies. Hey, in my book, that's all good. Um, if, you, if I go through my drawings tonight, they're you know, not many good ones. I think the last one was probably one that was was decent, but that's what we do. We, we produce a bunch of ho-hum stuff and the more we do so, we'll get better. Uh, so thanks for hanging out with me tonight. And again, let me know what you wanna do next week and uh, I'll see you then. Take care. <laughs>